supper and good afternoon to everyone to our Sunday afternoon worship. We give God thanks and praise for bringing us another Sunday. Today is a very special day for me. I'm celebrating something something is since I was born into this world. But I can truly say without him, I can do nothing. Without him, I'd surely fail. Without him, I would be drifting like a ship without a sail. But I can say Jesus. Without Jesus, he's, he's life. He's everything to me. And I give him thanks and praise for bringing me to another milestone, still giving him thanks and praise and still enjoying my walk with him. Amen. At this time, we're going to open up our service in a word of prayer. Let us pray. Loving Father and our God, we praise you, we magnify you, we adore you, we worship you, we honor you because there is none like your Father. Father, we just thank you, God, for this wonderful day which thou has granted us, O oh God. We thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercy. We thank you for your protection, your provision, your healing power upon our lives, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, for today, O oh God, as we celebrate, O oh God, Pentecostal Day, O oh God. Lord, we thank you, O oh God, that your Holy Spirit is still alive and well, O oh God. We ask, O oh God, that he would have his way in this service. We pray, O oh God, for those who are tuning in right now, Father, that there will be a blessing, O oh God. And we pray for those who will be tuning in at another time. We pray that the same spirit that is upon this service today, O oh God, will meet them at the time when they tune in, O oh God, and Lord, they would see you for who you are, O oh God, and accept you as Savior and Lord of their life. We ask that you continue to bless us as we worship you in this service, I pray. Amen and amen. And at this time, we're going to go into worship with our minister, Black. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Happy Pentecost Sunday, everyone, and happy Born Day to you, Sister Bernalyn. I'm coming to you live from Michigan this week. So I ask that you all just uh, keep me in prayer. We are visiting, uh, worshiping with uh, Bishop Paulette Vaughn and I'm in between services. So I'm gonna duck in and out, um, but pray for me. These may be some repeat songs, but I'm still gonna give God the glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Victory is mine, victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind. Victory today is mine. Oh, victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind. Victory today is mine. Oh, joy is mine. Joy is mine. Joy today is mine. Oh, I told Satan, get thee behind. Joy today is mine. Oh, love is mine. Love is mine. Love today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind. Love today is mine. Oh, peace is mine. Peace is mine. Peace today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind. Peace today is mine. Oh, victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. Oh, I told Satan, get thee behind. Victory today is mine. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. I will say of the Lord, He is my fortress. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, for He is a mighty God and a strong tower in Him. When I put my trust, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge. 
I will say of the Lord, He is my fortress. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, for He is a mighty God and a strong tower in Him. Will I put my trust? For he is a mighty God and a strong tower in him. Will I put my trust? Oh, this is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it and be glad okay Spernalyn. i'm here hello hey we lost then then amen we thank god for the worship that she has given us and we pray victory today is all we can say that in jesus name we told Satan, get the behind. <laughs> Victory today is mine. He said, behold, I have given you power to trample on serpents and scorpions and nothing shall by any means hurt us. So we have the power. Satan is only like a roaring lion. He has no power. Jesus took that power from him at Calvary. And when he rose up out of the grave, amen. That's why we can sing that. Victory today is ours, amen. Praise God. And we continue as we get the scripture reading from Sister Makeda. The scripture reading is taken from Acts 1, verses 1 through 14, and Acts 2, verses 1 through 21. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit. The hmm. That he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it's not for you to know the times or dates the father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be witnesses in Jerusalem in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And he said this, he was taken up before this very, their very eyes and a cloud hid him from, from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James, and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Ziliot and Judas, son of James. They all joined together constantly in, pray, in prayer, along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were stay staying in Jews Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment. 
because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our own our native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Juda Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the words of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the 11, raised his voice and addressed the crowd, fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk as you suppose, it's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my, my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit is come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me in every part of the earth and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the lord shall be saved that is our purpose here this afternoon that we can present you that good message and when you accept him as your savior you go to the next step and ask for the holy spirit if you look around today every religion every fake religion they try for something more than they have but we have the real thing we have the holy spirit they can call whatever they're seeking the holy spirit only we can say we have the Holy Spirit. So we, I, I, we hope that you, as you get the message today, you will understand what is the Holy Spirit purpose in your life and our life today. So we thank Makeda for the reading of the scripture. Is our sister back? I guess she's not. Is Makeda, is Aisha yeah, here? Yeah, then then. My she's... phone got too hot. I'm sorry, it cut off. Yeah, she's here. That's a first. Is she singing? You want me to do a song? Yes. Yes, it's, yes, it's time okay. now before the service. I am so sorry, everyone. My phone actually got too hot in the car and it cut off. So I will um, do the pre-sermonic selection and usher you all on into the service. Please pray for me. We rebuke the devil. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all thy works thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe display. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great. How great thou art. How great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art. How great. Thou art, O oh Lord my God, when I hear no someone consider the works thy hands have made, I see the stars, 
I hear the rolling thunder, my power throughout the universe display. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great. How Jesus. great thou art. How great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art. How great is our God, say with me, how great is our God, and I will see how great, how great is our God, oh, how great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, and who will see how great, how great is our God. Name above all names, you are worthy of all praise, and our hearts will sing how great is our God. All names, you are the all praise, and our hearts will sing how great is our God. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Amen. 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 Our God is great. He is the greatest. <laughs> he created the whole universe. He sent us his Holy Spirit. He sent us his only begotten son. How great is our God. Amen. Thank you, my sister. Amen. We thank God for bringing us thus far in our service. Today, we celebrate Pentecostal Sunday. And as our sister read from the scripture, it was the day when the Holy Spirit came and dwell in the hearts of men. And we used to sing a song, say, fire, 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 fall on me. And the Holy Ghost fire is still falling today. His power is like fire when, it come, when he comes to you. So I pray today that as you listen to the message, for those of you who are saved and have not have the Holy Spirit, that as you get the teaching today, you would ask the Holy Spirit to come and dwell in on the inside of you. And for those of you who are not saved, the scriptures say, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So I pray today would be your day of calling upon the Lord that he can come into your life. So at this time, I have the privilege of presenting to you, our speaker for the hour, none other than Dr. Novella Springett. Praise the Lord. And our sermon today is going to be I thought I had changed it to be catch on fire, but it's fire from heaven. It really doesn't matter. The fire from heaven will fall on us and we will all catch on fire. Mm -hmm. um, amen. Uh, I declare and decree that the Holy Ghost fire will be on all of us as we worship together and that chains will be broken in the name of Jesus. Healings amen. will occur. That people will come to know him. That those who don't know him will come to have a personal relationship and that they'll walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Only desire. In Jesus' name. The book of Luke, the book of Acts was written by the apostle Luke. And Luke wrote two books, Luke and Acts. 
And until the second century, they used to be circulated together. In both of them, he, he speaks about his friend Theophilus. Theophilus has gone into the dust of history. No one knows who he is. And we talk a lot about Paul because Paul wrote 13 of the 27 books. We know that John wrote the book of John, first, second, and third John and Revelation. But the little known fact is that Luke wrote more than all of them. The books are Luke and Acts combined for almost 30% of the New Testament. Luke is the longest book in the New Testament. The second longest is Matthew and Acts is almost exactly the same length as Matthew. Luke and Acts combined. In fact, it said, if you really want to know about what Jesus did when he walked this earth, you should read the book of Acts for the detail that he, it has. Luke was the most educated of them all because he was a physician. He spent a lot of years studying and he, and with, because of Acts, we know what occurred, how the gospel was spread. And his work is documented. When Luke says that the Jews were thrown out of Rome because they started fighting, the Christian emperor called the all of them out. We have the Roman historian saying, yes, the emperor had to get rid of the Jews. Whatever Luke wrote is corroborated throughout history. And it is thanks to Luke. And it was in the second century that they came with the bright idea of putting Luke with Matthew, Mark, Luke and John and separating Acts and calling it Acts of the Apostles, which is actually a misnomer because Acts only refers to two apostles, Paul and Peter. It really doesn't mention any of the others. And uh, people have always spoken about the fact that Acts ends with Paul sitting in a dungeon in Rome, but he wasn't writing about Paul. Luke, Acts was the continuation of Luke, that Jesus who had walked the earth in Galilee and Jerusalem and Judea, this ministry had now gone all the way to the capital city of Rome. He had gone to Asia, he had gone to Jerusalem, and he was now in Rome. It was now in all of the known world. What Jesus started had been continued. And so when we look at the scripture that we're looking at, Luke, it, we're going to be looking at verses 14 to 21. But Luke um, starts off telling us how they came to be there. That Jesus, after he was risen, didn't just abandon them because he had been a hard time for them. He spent 40 days walking the earth with them talking to them, comforting them, reinstituting Peter, you know, letting them know that he's risen, that it's not the, the, that the, that the crucifixion wasn't the end of it. As Mary would say, I have seen the Lord. They all saw the Lord and he departed. And on his way out, he said, I've got to go because the comforter is gonna come. The one I spoke about, He's going to come and stay here in Jerusalem. Get yourself ready because he's coming to be with you. And they stayed together. And, you know, no, notably, the scripture doesn't say that he only picked out his 12 favorite people, or the 11 then, because they, they said the women were there as well. His mother was there as well. Those who had walked with him, he, was, he wasn't playing any favorites. God doesn't play favorites. As long as you give him your all, he's going to give you the best that he has to give. They were all there waiting in Jerusalem as they had been told to do. And Pentecost was one of the three major feasts that the Jews observed. They were told by Moses three times a year they were to present themselves at the temple. And Pentecost occurs exactly 50 days after the Passover. It is often referred to as the Feast of Weeks because seven days, seven weeks of harvesting had already ta taken place. 
What is most notably about it, it was also for the Jews, the anniversary of when Moses came down from the mountain and gave them the law. And for the Jews, this was how they commemorated it. But for Christians, it was the start of the Christian church when the Holy Spirit came and presented itself to all who are waiting to hear from the Lord. And the Holy Spirit came with three things that have always been identified in Jewish history as showing the presence of the Lord, wind, fire, and inspired speech. And the, the scripture says suddenly, a song like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. We have heard, if you've ever been in a hurricane, you've heard the wind. And they said the violent, the violent sound that is said here is like when the sea is also hitting the shore during a storm. And we know that when the sea hits, you can hear it for miles. And this came and filled the house. God didn't come in quiet. He made a show. And the wind, the word that is translated here for wind is also translated for spirit. In fact, it is the same word that is used that when God created Adam, he breathed him in the breath of life. It is the same word that is used that when Ezekiel saw the bones and he said, can these bones live? And the spirit came on them. You know, the, and Judah, Judaism, the Jews believed that when the messianic age began, when Jesus came, this would be one of the signs that the spirit would come to breathe new life into those who are present, a different kind of life. And as Jesus said, as God said to Adam, live. As when he said to the bones, live. That's what this wind was coming with the spirit to bring new life, a different kind of life. Until that time, no one had ever had the spirit completely. It would come on occasion and they would prophesy and it would leave. But now the spirit of new life, this is what we represent by baptism when we go down in water and come up and this is what was being represented the wind of the holy spirit the spirit of the holy spirit was coming to bring a new life and he said they saw what seemed to be the second sign was fire the the tongues of fire separated and came to rest on them and fire is a well-known symbol of God. He told Moses, take off your shoes when he saw the burning bush, because where you stand is holy ground. Fire led them by night. John the Baptist says the Messiah is coming to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. In the Old Testament, you could only special people, the prophets saw the Holy, got the Holy Ghost, but these tongues of fire came and rest on everyone. A new covenant was being established by Jesus on this Pentecost day. He sent fire, we would sing, I'm saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized. On the day of Pentecost, he said, fire, 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 fire fall on me. On the day of Pentecost, Jeremiah says, it's like fire shut up in my bones. God doesn't come, he said, if you're lukewarm, I'm going to spew you out. He coming with fire so that we could all catch on fire. We could all burn up for the presence of the Holy Ghost. And, and then they came with inspired speech. Everybody heard them. It's not like in Corinthians where Paul is saying, you need a translator or, you know, pray privately. These people were actually speaking the language of the people who was there. God was showing up and showing off. And they're like, they were like saying like how people mock me and say, I don't pronounce tree properly. How can these men speak a language? They're poor fishermen. They don't know how to speak our sophisticated language, but the Holy Ghost was upon them. And it is said that the church in Rome was founded by someone who was there. No one knows how he started. No apostle went down there and started the church in Rome. And it was one of the biggest centers of the gospel. But someone who was there heard Jesus speak to them in their own language and tell them, I'm calling you. Go back home and live for me. I have a mission for you. 
And that's how the church started. On the day of Pentecost, Holy Ghost fire fall on me. That's what it did for them. And this is prophecy since 400 years had gone. Since Malachi, the prophet Malachi, Judaism, the Jews had heard from God. They just could read the Torah, but, and they believed that the messianic age would begin again when prophecy came again. And that's what happened on the day of Pentecost. The messianic age, you know, people like to talk nonsense, but it was just for that day. That is nowhere in the Bible, you know. The Holy Ghost is still here. The Comforter has come. The Holy Ghost from heaven. And he still wants to speak to people. He still wants Amen. to prophesy. He still wants to minister. He just wants us to open up our heart to the Holy Spirit presence. Amen. This is the start of the new covenant. And he came, this is, came with noise. He came with fire. And he came with them speaking in other tongues. It didn't just come like people act like God got a hard condition, so you got to be quiet. He shows up with noise. It's what it's all about. He was letting people know, like Jesus Christ have left with a third person. I'm sending him as I promise. And he's going to dwell in you. He that was without is going to now live in you. He's going to be like fire bubbling up inside. What Jeremiah spoke of, out of our belly shall flow rivers of living water. This is the Holy Spirit presence. And we come to the scripture verse. <clears throat> then Peter stood up with the 11, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. Joel Peter stand up with the 11. He's the leader. When he said, I'm going back fishing, they said, okay, we're coming with you. So he, and they were now back to 12 because they had just appointed Matthias to replace um, the traitor Judas. So they were back to 12, the original 12. And he says, he raised his voice and address the crowd. Those days, the rabbis would take you apart and treat you, they gather disciples. He didn't do any of that. He raised his voice and started talking. This is completely different from the Peter who betrayed Jesus when they asked, you used to be with him. He had courage now. He had boldness now because the presence of the Holy Spirit in his life. He had also walked with Jesus for 40 days. And there's no way in the Bible that it says that he had been told he was going to preach to thousands. He, he didn't prepare the sermon. He didn't say the sanctuary is going to seat 700 and it's Easter Sunday, so it's going to be crowded. So I have to prepare to preach. But he was prepared. Because he has spent three years walking with Jesus. It's not so much the book knowledge that is important. It's what happens in your life. We talk about Charles Spurgeon. No one before or after him have preached as many people. And he never went and got a degree. No one ordained him. He called ordination empty hands on empty heads. And no one preached to more people than him. I'm still reading him on a daily basis. He changed England, but he studied. He would read a book. They say every day he would read one full book. He studied Greek. He prepared. He put himself in the position. And that's what Peter had done. We talk about Peter and the fact that he went down under the water. But outside of Jesus, no one else has ever walked on the water. He stepped out on water. You know, he believed. And because of that, he had put himself in the position to stand at the head and speak to this crowd. And who was this crowd? Like we said, this is the Feast of Pentecost. This is the same people who were there for the Passover who had said, give us Barabbas. They had to show back up three times a year. So this was not friendly people. This was the same people that he ran from, the hideout, hid out from, he and the disciples. But this time, 
as and God made them sure. Can you imagine hearing a hurricane wind blowing in the house, hearing people speaking different languages, seeing fire fall? They were, this was God putting on an audio visual presentation that only he could. And so there was a crowd. But the foreigners had heard the message because they were spoken to in the language. The people who hadn't heard were the Jews. And that's why they were there saying that they had to be drunk. And he said, he started, or Peter started off by saying, fellow Jews, it is only the third hour of the morning. Um, which the Jews started counting from six in the morning. So that was nine in the morning. So we can't possibly be, be drunk. And, what, what, you know, I know people wake up six o'clock in the morning and go to the rum shop, but this was not the standard in Jewry. The hour for prayer, the first hour for prayer was at nine in the morning. And they only ate two meals a day. They did not eat until they had met with God. So normally the first meal would occur at 10. And Josephus, who was a Jewish historian, said that on a feast day, they normally would not eat until midday. So he was saying, we can't be drunk, you know? And this always gonna be people in the crowd who think you don't know what you're doing, who think you're crazy, uh, it's, you know, you're believing in myths. From the day of Pentecost, from the very beginning, there were people throwing shade. It doesn't matter what they say. You still preach the word. It didn't prevent uh, Peter from going out and preaching the word. And this is what they said, no, we're not drunk. This is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. You know, this is the first new covenant sermon. He had gone out to, with the others, but this is the first sermon of the Christian church. And he doesn't start off saying, well, I have a bright idea. He says, let's go back to scripture. Let's look at what the word said. It's what Joel, it's what Jesus said. It is written. Jesus told to everyone could have just started up a new set of scripture. But what he was setting was a standard. Let's go back to the word of God. This is our mission, not to entertain and have plays. Go back to the word of God. There's so much in the word. I'm telling you, as I prepare, some of, I just have to cut down because some of it I can't, I just can't handle. And I'll be here until five o'clock still talking if I try to pull it on it. There's so much in the word of God. This is the example that was set by Peter. This is what the prophet Joel spoke about. Study to show thyself approved. Go and read the word, speak the word, talk the word, know the word. This is a standard that we are being called to and held to. You know, uh, this, it's not in many, not in a lot of, 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 of um, preachers, but there's still some. And, this, and seek God for yourself. Nobody can stop anyone from seeking God for themselves. And this is what the scripture said that he spoke about. In the last days, God says, I'll pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below. Blood and fire and billows of smoke. <clears throat> the sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord, we sh shall be saved. It will come to pass in the last days. We are living in the last days. 2000 years now, we've been living in the last days. The last days, in fact, we only have the Bible because the apostles were sure that Jesus would come back at any minute, that they weren't writing it down. And as they realized that the years were going, they started writing down what had happened. This is why we have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, because, and we live in the hope of the imminent coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
But the world tells us that a thousand years is with him like a day. It's 2,000 years for us, but two days for God. You know, we don't know when he's coming. He said, don't listen to anybody who say that he's coming because they don't know. He said, it's going to come like a thief in the night. Thief don't announce when they're coming because they don't plan to get caught. You know, but Jesus is coming again. This Jesus that we serve, it's coming again. But these are the last and closing days. This is the message for us, our time, we were three score and 10. We would celebrate with Bernal and she says 35 plus a lot more. And <laughs> we celebrate with her because uh, three score and 10 is all that we're guaranteed. But we yeah. know well, we're doing it for the long haul because this is only for a moment eternity is coming we live in the last days we have the holy spirit upon us and he joel said in these last days i am going to pour out my spirit on all flesh it's no more just the jews it's no more just samuel when he says call for the uh, praise and worship singers and let me worship so I can prophesy and then it would, it would lift up off of him. I'm going to pour out not just a half a glass or you know a little bit of some drops here and there. I'm pouring out my spirit on all flesh. I'm pouring it out. I'm not holding it back. I'm calling on people to open up and let the Holy Spirit come in. He's pouring out his spirit. He's giving us a new walk, a new talk. The things that I used to do, I don't do them anymore because his Holy Spirit gives us a new life, a new way of worshiping, a new way of talking. He's gonna pour out his spirit on all flesh. And he says, your sons and your daughters, they're gonna prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams, even my servants, both men and women. I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. He is in a category that God leaves out. Whether you're poor or you're rich, male or female, young or old. And he keeps saying, I'm gonna prophesy. You're gonna prophesy in the name of Jesus. You got to decree and decree, write the visions that you want in your life. Write the things that you need, prophesy over your life. You're gonna walk in victory. The devil will not have authority over you in the name of Jesus. You cancel all the plans of the enemy. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy that I'm gonna get this job I want. I prophesy I'm gonna get this house I want. I prophesy that I will not be harassed. In the name of Jesus, we need to, the one continuous thing that it says, you're going to prophesy. You're going to dream dreams. You're going to dream a dream, a dream that sees you where you can't even imagine in your own mind. You're going to see the vision that God has for you. God doesn't have a vision for us to be beat down and people treating us badly. He says, you are a royal priesthood, a holy nation. You're going to be the head and not the tail. It doesn't matter what anybody says. It doesn't matter what persecution comes. Prophesy in the name of Jesus. Because the spirit is poured out on us. And this is going to happen in these last days. And we know that one that great day, you know, he doesn't just give good news. He said, there's going to come a day of judgment when the moon is going to be turned to blood. You know, there's going to come that great and terrible day of the Lord. And each of us have got the answer for what we've done with our time. What have you done for God? You know, everything we have, we have only because of the goodness of God. There's going to be a time when we're going to have to tell God every second of every minute of every day, what did you do? But most important of all, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you call on him, he's a prayer hearing and answering God. 
I remember many years ago, I used to go to a church in the Bronx and this woman, a tall woman from Bermuda, she would testify. Every time she testified, she would say the exact same thing. She said, she would say, a lot of people willing, but they're not able. And a lot of people able, but they're not willing. But God is both willing and able. He is willing and able. He can do anything we ask. Anyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Nobody can block you. No gossip circle. Nobody who think they're important. All who call on the name of the Lord. And it's not just a magic prayer that you say the Lord's prayer. It's you acknowledge that Jesus is Lord. There is no other God but the one Jesus Christ, the one who came and died. And once you really call on him, he's gonna hear and answer your prayer. And this is what the Holy, Gate, Holy Ghost came for. Fell on Peter, fell on the apostles. I've heard people say, this is impossible. How could an unknown person that be crucified and 12 unknown uneducated people with the exception of Luke, fishermen, no formal education, change the course of history, change the course of the world. History is divided into two, before Christ and after that. That's what the earthly history is divided into. No matter what they say about common era, there's only one God and the all who call on him will be saved. And when the fire came, it wasn't for entertainment. It was so that Peter could stand up and preach, so that people could hear about the word. The Holy Ghost fire is for us to go out and preach, you know, Amen. not stand around in clubhouses, keeping each other company and fighting over stupidness the quarreling, the jealousy, nonsense. Go out and preach. Don't let anybody stop you. And the Bible says that we are his epistles, the life we live. And you know, it ain't enough to just preach the word with your mouth. You got to preach it with how you live. On the job, does anybody believe you're a Christian? In your home, does anyone believe you're a Christian? I had to learn that. It doesn't matter how much money you throw in the offering if you're not living right, if you're not walking for God right. We've called to preach. Go your dear friend to all the world and preach the gospel. Oh, it wasn't, he didn't leave out anybody. He didn't pick out a certain set. Preach by the way you live. Witness the people. Go and be my witnesses in Judea, in Samaria, where nobody want to go into the uttermost ends of the earth. It's not a call to be comfortable and say, I am on my way to heaven. I've said the sinner's prayer and I'm good. Holy Ghost fire was sent from heaven to set us on fire. That we could change the world, continue the work of changing the world. The statistics aren't good. We're still at 35%. And the Bible said this gospel of the kingdom must be preached in all the world before Jesus will come. You know, there's so many people all over the world who need to know who Jesus is. And where we can't go, he said, the harvest is right. Pray the Lord of the harvest to send forth workers. Pray for the workers. If, if not everybody called to get up and go, but there are people you're working with who will not listen to anyone else tell them about Jesus. But they have seen your life and you can make a difference. Preach, be witnesses, go into the world. Go down there where nobody wants to go in the worst part of town and tell them that the rest of the world may be looking down on them. But Jesus came and he loved them and he wanted to change their life. You know, the Bible didn't say sit down and wait for people to come. It said, go, let's go for God. Let's get on fire for God. Holy Ghost fire, Pentecost Sunday, fall on us in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. Pentecost of fire. We thank God for the word. You know, you can't have 
fire unless you call on the name of the Lord. Because that's how you come into relationship with Jesus, with God, and with the Holy Spirit. So any one of you today who have heard this message and you're not saved, today is a good day to call upon the name of the Lord. And when you call on him, ask him to give you the Holy Spirit and he will do just that. He said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. This is how you know that you have the Holy Spirit. It's not a, a, a book sense. You know, many people today are saying, I'm filled with the Holy Spirit because I can do this, I can do that. And yes, he said, the gift and calling of God are without repentance. But when you have the Holy Spirit, it's a whole different level. You have knowledge that you don't even know that you have. Because the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. He's going to reveal all things to you, secret things. When you think that you have studied and you know everything, he's going to reveal it to you in a clear way. So we ask that the Holy Spirit today would, in the same spirit, same spirit is the spirit that draws men to Christ. So no matter where you are, whether you're saved or sinner, it's the same spirit. But you have to start with calling on the name of the Lord. He said, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And he says, he asks for the Holy Spirit and he's going to come to you. He's going to fill you with his Holy Spirit. And he says, that same spirit that lives on the inside of you is going to give you what you want, when you need it, how you need it, how he wants to use his gift through you and in you. So we thank God for the word today. Let the spirit of God dwell in you richly. Let the presence of God walk with you daily and guide your footsteps. For without him, we can do nothing, absolutely nothing. We can't do nothing without him. It's because of him that we are able to do. We live, we move, and have our being in him. And we thank God for the Holy Spirit. We thank God for those of us who know what it is to have the Holy Spirit in our lives. You know, we know when we are going astray. We know when we are talking out of tongues. God. Sometimes we, we, we overshadow the Holy Spirit and because we want to be in our flesh. But when we don't parade in our flesh, we still have to deal with the Holy Spirit because he's going to point to us what we did wrong. And all we have to do is to repent and ask for more grace and more strength so that we won't make that mistake again. Oh, what a Holy Spirit. He said, when the spirit of truth is come, he's going to guide you into all truth. So let us depend on the Holy Spirit, depend on God, depend on Jesus, because this is what Jesus died for. He said, if I go not away, the Holy Spirit will not come. You won't understand fully what I'm telling you about my father unless I go and the Holy Spirit come. You know, God always works in three. He says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. And he says the spirit of the Lord move upon the foundation of the, of, of the earth. And that's how God created the heaven says, always God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. God sent his son and Jesus sent his Holy Spirit. There's still three in one. So we pray that today as you hear this message that you would have a hunger first for the salvation of the Lord, and then for the spirit of the Lord to live out that life in you. We thank God for using our sister so daily. We pray that the whole ministry will continue to bless us. She will continue to be inspired, that the Holy Spirit will continue to reveal himself to her and the gift of the words that he wants her to speak and not speak of herself. In the name of Jesus, praise God. We thank you. At this time, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you. We thank you, God, for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for your presence, oh God. We know, God, that without you, God, we are nothing. Without your Holy Spirit, God, we are just dead, Father. So we thank you, God, that the Holy Spirit has made us alive and well in you. And Father, we pray to do, God, as your word has gone forth throughout the airways, Father. We pray, oh God, that your Holy Spirit, oh God, that same spirit, oh God, that we have spoken about today, we draw men to you. We draw those, oh God, who have not called upon you, oh God, that you would give them that desire, oh God, to call upon your name, oh God, and that today, oh God, will be their day of salvation, Father. And when they have come to know you, oh God, that they would desire that Holy Spirit, oh God. Lord, as Peter say, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believe, oh God? So we pray, oh God, that as they believe, oh God, that that Holy Spirit, oh God, would also come with them, Father. We praise you and we thank you for it. We pray for those of us, oh God, who are walking with you, oh God, especially for those who have not yet, oh God, asked for the Holy Spirit. I pray, oh God, you would give them a hunger and thirst, oh God, for your Holy Spirit, oh God, to dwell in their lives, oh God, that you can move them, oh God, 
God, from one level to the next, oh God. They would know, oh God, what is the depth and the height, oh God, of your, of your spirit in their life. We pray, oh God, that you continue to bless us. We thank you, God, for all those who are tuning in. We pray, oh God, for those who will be tuning in later. We pray, oh God, that the same anointing that is on this word right now will continue to dwell on the word as we continue to minister to those who tune in later, Father. We praise you and we glorify you in Jesus' precious name, I pray. Amen and amen, amen, amen. Amen. Is there a song? Yes, I have and one more. <laughs> Praise God. Lord, we thank you that we can do nothing without you. Hallelujah. It's in him that I live, move, and have my being. In him that I live, move, and have my being. I'm nothing without you, Lord, I'm nothing without you, I'm nothing without you, Lord, I'm nothing without you, it's in him that I live, move, and have my being, in him that I live, move, and have my being. It's in him that I live, move, and have my being. I'm nothing without you. Lord, I'm nothing without you. I'm nothing without you. Lord, I'm nothing without you. So live in me and breathe through let your glory reign in me so live in me oh, through me let your glory reign in me it's in him that I live, move, and have my being. In him that I live, move, and have my being. It's in him that I live, move, and have my being. I'm nothing without you. Lord, I'm nothing without you. I'm nothing without you. Lord, I'm nothing without you. So live in me and breathe through me. Let your glory reign in me. So live in me. Lord, breathe through me. Let your glory reign in me. Lord, live in me. I'll breathe through me. Let your glory reign in me. Lord, I'm nothing without you. God, I'm nothing without you. Lord, we're 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 nothing without you. Amen. Amen. We are nothing without him. You know, we are nothing without him. And we could never have too much of God or too much of his Holy Spirit. If you ever feel like you have too much of God or you have too much of the Holy Spirit, it's because you are not giving out. Because the Holy Spirit and God is not for you. It's for you to give out. Because that's what he said. You should preach to all the world. So if you have the Holy Spirit, and you feel, well, I've got all that I want, <laughs> you are not giving out. So ask the Holy Spirit to help you how to give it out because that's what he's, he's, he has poured in you so that you can pour into someone else. 
Amen. We thank God for today's service, all the participants. We thank him most of all for his Holy Spirit upon this service, the anointing upon the word. So we praise him and we give him all glory, honor, and praise for what he's doing and what he continued to do with his ministry in Jesus' name. At this time, we're going to have the closing remarks and the benediction. Praise. Praise the Lord, uh, as always, please reach out to us on um, either by email or the YouTube channel or the websites. We're going to upload the message so that you can keep, go back and I invite people to look at it later. McKayden. I invite you as always to Go to Amazon if you want to know why you believe what you believe. This is uh, this is how I learned, and I would like to share it with others. And this is how I chose to share it with others. And let's do the benediction. <clears throat> the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you. Peace. Have a blessed week. Amen.